Today I'll be showing you the tools and basic techniques of soldering, common mistakes, and how to avoid and fix them. Let's get started. My iron is a fancy soldering station with adjustable heat, but any pencil style iron with a fine tip that's rated for at least 30 watts will do. This particular iron is $7 on Amazon and works great. The other thing you'll need to get started is some rosin core solder. This one pound roll should last for years. A solder sucker is good for mistakes and essential if you plan on doing a lot of desoldering. Desoldering wick is also good, but is more suited for finer work. Painter's tape is great for holding components in place while soldering, and a set of helping hands is, well, pretty helpful. A small pair of clippers will be useful for trimming off extra wire and components. We'll start by setting up a workspace. Soldering is messy, so don't do it on something nice. I like to set up a piece of scrap paper beneath my iron. Cardboard or tin foil also works. The biggest cause of problems when soldering is a dirty tip. Because of the intense heat, oxides form over time and prevent heat from transferring properly, leading to messy and incomplete joints. A dirty tip has a brown or black appearance, while a clean tip is shiny and bright. Luckily, cleaning the tip is easy. My preferred method is brass wool, but you can also use a damp sponge or even a damp paper towel in a pinch. For through-hole components such as resistors, bend the leads to fit into the board, then press the component in place to ensure it seats properly. Secure it in place. My preferred method is painter's tape, but you can also bend the leads at a slight angle to hold the component in place. Before soldering, tin your iron with a small amount of solder. This helps to transfer heat between the iron and the joint you're making. Apply the iron to one side of the joint, with the broadest side contacting for better heat transfer. Apply the iron to the other side of the joint until the solder has flown around the whole joint. You may need to add a little more solder to the iron to act as a heat bridge. Use a pair of clippers to remove the excess leads, cutting them just above the solder. Be careful when clipping or bending leads on a component that has already been soldered. Too much force in the wrong direction can cause the pad to lift up, and this is either difficult or impossible to repair. Here are some examples of good solder joints. Note how shiny they are. In this cross section, you can see how the solder makes a conical shape and also makes good contact with the pad and the lead. A cold joint such as this one happens when heat wasn't transferred into the joint properly and the solder didn't create a metallurgic bond with the pad and the lead. It will be messy and dull in appearance. As you can see in this cross section, the solder touches the pad and the lead but pulls around them and doesn't bond with them. In this case, the solder bonded with the lead but not with the pad. This is caused by the iron not properly contacting the pad. Cold joints can be fixed by applying heat again and adding solder as needed. These are incomplete joints. The solder has bonded only partially around the joints and you can see the pads and pins are still exposed in some places. This is often caused by either not enough heat or not enough solder. This cross section illustrates what is happening in a partial joint. Sometimes the existing solder isn't properly bonded to the padded pin, but both problems can be fixed by applying heat again and adding solder. This is a flux joint. Similar to a partial joint, solder has only bonded in a few places, and flux from the rosin core has filled the cavities. While it may feel and look secure, the solder may not even be making electrical connection. In this cross section, you can see that most of the space is occupied by flux, shown in orange. This can be fixed by applying heat and more solder, but in some cases you may need to clean out the excess flux first. There are two commonly used methods of desoldering components, either with the solder sucker, like the bulb type here, or with the desoldering braid. To use a solder sucker, apply heat and add solder until there is a large blob on the joint. Keep the joint liquid, then suck away as much as possible with the solder sucker. You may need to do this several times, reapplying solder as needed. To use a desoldering braid, tin your iron, then apply the desoldering braid and apply the iron on top. Wait until the braid wicks away the solder, then remove both. Repeat as needed for the other leads, then remove the component. The procedure for unclogging holes is very similar to desoldering a component. Apply your tinned iron and solder if needed, then use your solder sucker on the other side of the board to suck the solder out of the hole. With a little practice, you'll be able to do it quickly and easily. Don't hold the iron there for too long, and don't put the tip into the hole, 
because that's likely to cause the traces or pad to lift, causing irreparable damage. When soldering wires, it's usually easiest to tin the wire first. Similar to soldering a joint, apply the tinned iron, then apply solder from the other side. Soldering wires into a board is the same as soldering a component. However, be careful bending the wires afterwards since they become brittle at the joint. To solder wires into tabs, such as on this motor, first insert the wires, then solder them as you would a joint. There are many ways to connect two wires, but here are two methods. Secure the wires so they don't move while you solder them. Twist the ends together securely, then apply solder. You can also place two pre-tinned wires side by side, then apply the iron and solder to join them together. Thank you for watching. This video is licensed under the awesome Creative Commons 4.0 attribution license, which means you can do anything you want with it, even commercially, as long as you give me appropriate credit for the original content. If you have any questions about licensing or want the source clips, just contact me in the comments down below. But for now, happy soldering!